I thought this angle is a good angle to start here. You can see this expansion joint. It's a little wider at the top, uh, smaller at the bottom there, and then boom, you write up that there's foundation issues. Your job's done, you move on and let the buyers hang out with it, hang, ha handle the problem. So I'm gonna go with no, don't do that, because what happens is, is that you cause a lot of frustration in the buying process. There's a difference between settlement and foundation failure. So how you can help identify these issues is you can watch this video and follow the process is how I determine if this is settlement or foundation failure. And then also I recommend taking Mike Gandy's class, structural engineer through RETS, real estate training systems. Uh, that school is ran by my father and they can help you evaluate foundations. So let's go through the process I take as a home inspector of what I use to figure out if the foundations failed or not. Step one. What you want to do is before you whip out any tools or come up with your final opinion, you want to do an overall just visual inspection of the interior of the structure. So just walk around the interior. Do you see any joint cracks, stress cracks, are doors sticking, you know, are cabinets out of line? You know, you'll actually see cabinets shifting out of place. Um, do you see any tape twisting? So we're going to look for those items first as we walk through the structure. When walking around inside the property, you want to focus on the joints, corners, movement of doors, movement of windows, shifting of trim boards, and odd spots of patching and painting around the structure. This is where the first signs of stress normally shows. The cracks you are looking for are typically not straight. If you see a lot of straight cracks in the property, straight cracks are, can come from several factors. Some are not running your HVAC properly, causing the drywall to expand and contract more than normal, slamming of doors, normal seasonal movement of the foundation, not watering your foundation correctly, and several other maintenance issues around the structure. Think anything straight is typically man-made. The cracks you are looking for that relate to foundation failure shoot off in 45 degree angles and take several sharp turns. So anything that does not travel in a straight line is due to nature and nature can be related to foundation failure or more movement that is outside of tolerance. Walking around the interior of the structure, we didn't see any major stress indicators. So all the doors open and close fine. All the windows open and close fine. We didn't see any major stress cracks. Not even, we only saw like one joint crack in the entire property. And this is 2006. You can see that it hasn't been freshly patched or painted. Everything is pretty original. So we know that there hasn't been any major issues on the main structure. After that, what you wanna do is walk around the exterior of the structure now. So we're gonna walk around the exterior, see if we see any major signs of foundation movement on the outside. Walking around the outside, just looking at this wall right here, you wanna kinda, of, you always wanna look at it from this angle and then you're gonna to wanna to look at it straight on. So what, what I'm looking at whenever I'm looking at this angle is I'm evaluating, you know, how's the water draining around the structure? Does it look like it's draining away from the property? Is it have a, a, a negative grade towards the proper, away from the property? This can help indicate why or if there is possible movement. You wanna look in between the windows, you can see that this caulking is original and it has barely separated. We don't see any major issues between any of the joints in the structure. Keep walking around. This is the other expansion joint. You can see the expansion joint is just fine. No issues. And yeah, uh, we don't see any signs of damage on the exterior wall. So other indications where you would see normal signs that the foundation has moved is you're gonna see freeze board separations, spatial uh, separation, maybe separation in the soffit. You'd see gaps in between the freeze board on the exterior. You don't see anything like that. So on this side of the structure, we do not evaluate any signs of stress. Okay, moving to the front side of the structure, we are doing the same process. We're gonna start from the top to the bottom. We are gonna go to the fascia soffit freeze board. We're gonna look at that first. We do not see any signs of indication of stress. So you have a little bit of whatever going on there, nothing, you know, just a little caulking, uh, wear and tear from weather, expanding and contracting. 
and then uh, we'll look at the bricks, the columns. Do we see any uh, movement there? No. Then we'll move on to the window over here. Do we see any separation between the window of where the foundation may have uh, accrued some stress? We do not see anything at all. And then let's back up. We'll look at the, the big picture too as well. You know, does it look like the property is shedding water on the side of the port or property too as well? And it does. So uh, no indications of stress on this side of the structure. Moving to the other half front. So this is where we start to see a little bit of settlement. I, want, I don't even want to call it issues. We're going to call it settlement. All properties are going to experience this. So we have a little bit of separation in the uh, freeze board and it has an even and a little bit of separation on the soffit. So this is where you start to see some of the movement. Remember, all properties are gonna experience movement just because you see this, do not write up the foundation. Moving to the other portion here of the garage. So we have the fascia soffit freeze board and this is where we start to see a little bit more separation. But we have the freeze board actually being pulled away just a little bit, but it's not even enough to put your finger in there. So you're probably talking maybe like a quarter inch of movement. And then remember before, or remember, but if you're watching this the first time, I always talk about looking down the brick line and you do see a small dip on my end and maybe like a little bit of movement in the in the wall. I'm talking it's, it's minor, minor movement because look, it doesn't even move all the way out to the, the fascia board. The soffit looks pretty intact and then the freeze board has just a little bit of separation. So uh, I wouldn't say this is major indicators yet. So walking down the wall here, this is where we hit, I guess the large sign is whenever you see the gap between the top of the expansion joint. That looks about a little, about an inch. And then as you travel down the expansion joint, it goes back to its original sign. So it could indicate that the wall has may have shifted just a little bit at one point in time. But let's see if there's any other indicators. I always say you want three indications of failure before you write up, you know, that the wall is experiencing more than normal movement. We are allowed a pretty large tolerances within our slabs. And just because you have a little bit of movement, we get seasonal movement. You get hot and then dry and it rains. So your, your foundations are designed to flex. So you don't wanna mess with that. You want your foundations to flex a little bit. This is what we would normally see in normal indications of your seasonal movement with your structure. So you have that indication that the wall has, uh, may have shifted a little bit, but whenever we look at this window, look, there is no separation in this window at all. No stress indicators on the on the wall. No separation between the, the window framing at the top. And the freeze board has a little bit of like caulking improvements. So yes, this can seem a little scary, especially if you are a newer inspector, you're gonna see this and be like, oh my gosh, foundation movement. But this is normal in a on a property of 2006. Moving a little bit further down, you can see, um, you know, the same window, the next window, uh, no signs of stress. We look down the wall in this direction too, and no indications of any issues. So re you only have really one sign that there may be something. Okay, let's head inside. We're gonna head into the garage here. I wanna show you um, the, the last sign. It's in unison with this, uh, this expansion joint where there has been a little bit of tape twisting. So coming in here. So right here we have this uh, tape twisting and this uh, joint crack here, or you could label it as a stress crack, whichever you prefer. Uh, this is in the same place of the expansion joint outside. And what's nice is you can really see, you know, the foundation flooring where we don't see any signs of indication of stress. And this is our only other sign. We have a little bit of separation on the outside. We have a little uh, separation in our uh, our freeze board here. And then we have some joint cracking on the inside, some uh, tape pulling. So do you still write up the foundation? 
Well, the next step is, is what we do is we pull up our zip level and we'll start to measure the floors because again, you can get seasonal movement with properties like this and it doesn't mean that the foundations failed. The, we, we want the property to flex because if it didn't flex, they would snap in half. So let's uh, see our tolerances in, on, on the garage. Got Josh here. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zip level the garage. And whenever you zip level a garage, you actually have to do it different because your garages are built at a natural slope and you'll get a, you know, a negative reading no matter what. So actually what you have to do is zip level the roof or ceiling so what josh is going to do is he's going to show you the steps of how to zip level the ceiling and uh show you our final readings yep. all right so the process when you're zip leveling the ceiling in the garage is actually similar to what you would do on a normal foundation reading so we have our home base point here uh, which are right next to the garage door and what we're going to do is we're going to zero out our zip level it's kind of wobbling around because my arm's shaking i'm tired <laughs> uh, so i have our zero points and then what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm just going to work clockwise around the garage. So we're going to come over here to about the middle point and it may take a second for it to calibrate itself. 0.1, a tenth of an inch. And you're going to get slight variations like that just because of the wood framing and because it was built by humans that sometimes use levels but not always. You don't mean it's always straight? It's not always straight. <laughs> Alright, this one's zero. We'll come over here. And this is the point that we are concerned with. We have this crack, uh, the stress crack of the sheetrock. And on the exterior of the home, we have a crack through the perimeter beam and then the separation of the expansion joint. So this is the, the main reason why we're zip leveling the garage area. All right, so this looks like it's down four tenths of an inch. Okay. Some slight settlement, but nothing crazy. And finally, we'll come down here at the edge. All right, and this one's uh, down half an inch. So some slight settlement in this area. So in, in our opinion, uh, in this neighborhood, we have big trees. We have no watering system on the home, no soaker hoses, no sprinkler system. So we're gonna call this seasonal movement um, with being affected by the lack of rain or sometimes too much rain uh, during one time. But Foundation still performing adequately in our opinion, and we we'll just uh, recommend that you continue to monitor, to monitor this situation. Okay, there you go. So kind of a, a quick walk around, a quick walkthrough of what we look for whenever you're doing a foundation evaluation. You really wanna go through a, you know, a three-step process. One of indications on the inside, two indications on the outside, and three to indication to confirm or deny the following uh, your findings with some sort of tool and then you document it. And if you're looking for the type of comments that we use or the verbiage that we use of how we write up our foundations, we sell our comments online at homeiw.com and we sell our, all our comments together. So you get all our foundation, our roof comments, you know, plumbing, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're looking for verbiage of how to write things up, you know, help us out and purchase the comments. All right. Thanks guys. Please hit that like and subscribe and catch us on the next one. See ya. Bye.